What's up, what's up, what's up, you guys? And welcome to another Love Below Sex Talk with T. Gray. You all just chimed in for Touch Me here Tuesday. We're get to touching and feeling and seeing what's going on. I got my man, Prophet Pete, in here with me. What's up, Prophet? What up, what up, what up? I'm here in the building doing what I do, that's it. Man, it's cold down here. Is it cold in New York? This well, is the way it's snow, just man. cold, cold here. We had snow during the, the middle part of the day, and then it started raining, so it all went away. But it is cold, very, very cold. I feel like when I say it's cold, people from up north be like, you don't know what it's cold. You don't know what cold's like. Y'all don't know what snow is. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless that water, the, the wind blowing over that water, you really ain't going to feel it, feel it. Like, our cold here is a little different. It's a little different. Like, I'm glad I ain't in it. Shit. I'm glad. <laughs> but what I am happy about today, you guys, we have a fantastic guest in the building. We're going to bring him on. And one of my best friends in this comedy game, he's an actor, he's a comedian, he's a teacher, he's a, a little bit of everything. And you can catch him now doing a brand new live show on YouTube and Facebook. You're going to see him in the upcoming Coming to America too. My friend Rodney Perry's in the building. Yeah. I'm like, who the hell is she talking about? <laughs> now, I want to see this I want to see this. This is going to be you great. Know, the, the man sounds amazing, don't he? Hey, hey, hey. Listen, he, got, he got everybody fooled. Listen, I was about to pull open my thesaurus and see what other words <laughs> I can add on here. You All can right. add on. Well, welcome. Welcome to a little bit of sex talking. Today it is Touch Me Here Tuesday. So we're Touch talking me erogenous. Touch Me Here. We're mm -hmm. talking erogenous zones today, you guys. My goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. So okay. have you ever come across somebody with a crazy erogenous zone? I mean, you know, you you know, the typical hot spots is always when, you know, the, you know, the neck, the back of the neck. You know, I I I have once had a, a lady that was real like real sensitive, like behind her knee, you know. And Got behind her knee ain't no joke. You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> So you know you catch you you know yeah you know that's that's the that's the dope thing about you know a, a new partner is exploring those new those new hot spots you know and figuring out what that is that's the jigsaw puzzle of the new the new person right most definitely so one thing that I've come to find out is that as I get older my erogenous zones change um the 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 level of um, intensity that I can can receive if, if they're manipulated, and then I'm finding new spots. Um, and I was one of those people. Now, are, they new or are they new or neglected? Oh, did it? I, I knew you was gonna speak a word to the people. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you was gonna speak a word to the people, and it could be that. It could very well be neglected, and I'm not. I'm not even going to say neglected by my partner, but maybe even just neglected by myself because I feel like we should all know our bodies. Um, but if I got that one spot way back here, right up underneath that good bra strap, like, well, I didn't even know that that existed. Whoa, That's who did that? Where that come from? <laughs> 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 I brushed up against the wall real good. My child. I was like, oh. trying to put me between my toes. How you do that? I <laughs> so what about you, Prophet? Have you ever come across something odd or are your erogenous zones yourself? Are they typical? Uh mine are pretty typical, I guess. I, I would assume so. I never really had a partner that liked to explore, you know, to the point where they found new stuff. So I know where they are. If they find them, they do, they don't, whatever. But I like to touch everywhere, so nothing's right. weird to me. So I'm gonna find it if it's on you. Hilarious. I'm hey, it's on you. hey, let me tell you something. I, I, I'm, as, I'm not freaky. You know, <laughs> I mean, and some dudes like to claim they freaky, but I, until you get with a freaky woman, you know, you'll find out you ain't freaky at all. <laughs> Stay your ass away from my booty. <laughs> Listen, I don't even want to find out I like that. You don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> you know what I mean? But 
But it, but here's the thing. What's the harm in finding out? I mean, you could be at home in, the, in, in your own know. bed. You don't want to know? I don't want to don't, don't even, don't even, don't even blow no air no, that no way. No way to take it, though. And you ain't no thug way. Hold up. Let me get my... <laughs> <laughs> That's it up. But some men, I get that uh, anal play, you know, most people, they find it synonymous with homosexuality. But the reality of it is that there are plenty of heterosexual men that enjoy anal play. And nine times out of 10, the orgasm that you receive from some of those things are phenomenal. Now, I'm, I'm not. You said what? I'm not on that. I mean, I'm not like I'm not I'm not playing painting. Keep your little phenomenal orgasm. Just give me the regular. <laughs> just, the regular been getting me through my whole just, life. I'm just fine. Give with me it. that 87. Y'all can keep that 93. I don't know. I don't that. need no 93. <laughs> <laughs> don't need no 93. But I think it's um High time, though, just a lot of people begin to explore their zones. Some people don't even realize that it's actually a thing and that um, you can receive a lot of stimulation or, or even orgasmic stimulation and not even oh, have oh, penetration. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on, T-Gray. So let me yes. ask you this. As a woman, yes. so you with X guy and he he a little too in, in a play. That, don't, that ain't no red flag. So let me tell you where T Gray not what I'm not gonna do. Okay. I'm not fit, I'm not fit to strap up on no dude. Not doing it. I'm not doing it. If he okay. wants me to insert anything larger than a pinky, it's not happening. Nah. So no pegging for you. Nah, nah, okay. I'm not doing it. Mm -mm. But in my past, I've licked the dude's ass. I'm not gonna act like I'm 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 a saint. I'm a little bit of heathen in me. I have. And when I had that man balled up in the fetal position, I felt very proud of myself. <laughs> oh, God. I can't even be so. You <laughs> say it ain't so, T. Greg. Oh, boy. Let me the tell things you we do when we in love. Let me tell you, you know, say what I know about men. <laughs> Let me tell you what I know about men. A man ass ain't never clean. <laughs> How can I, he been in shower three hours. He done, he done missed the spot because he nasty. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, I'm I'm not gonna disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> and some of you ladies out there, some of you ladies, you ever get? Hey, I, I know I know Prophet ain't gonna ain't gonna admit to this, but you you ain't never got no wrong stuff on your mustache. <laughs> <laughs> What's that smell? Shit, shit happens out here in these streets. That's you. terrible. <laughs> terrible. That's who, who you point at. <laughs> you don't want no doogie on the mustache. That's all I'm saying. Nah, nah, you don't want that on the mustache. So, since since the subject has been brought up, you guys know I'm I'm totally transparent and I'm all for an embarrassing story. But I actually did shit in the bed one day. And it wasn't, I didn't know what was going to happen. Like, I had no clue. Like, we were having sex. We had a uh, little anal sex. Okay. And, uh, you know, was going, doing some other things. And I thought I was about to squirt, but no. It was shit. Wow. Mm. That's the thing, though. They call that something. Ain't there ain't a word for that? There's some type of thing. Fucked up is the word. <laughs> <laughs> I got a story, it's not my story. So one of my homies, he used to do comedy and he got in the porn industry. And mm -hmm. so in porn, when you know you know you're gonna do anal that they they ask you not to eat, right? And okay. so this girl had full went that rule and she had ate, and so I let loose boot. <laughs> Don't tell nobody. That, and 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 she had a situation. Her shit gas. Yeah. Alabama stupid. So <laughs> so no. So my man, he was like, "Yo, Rod." He said he had. She got him all up in here. Mm -hmm. Just just dookie everywhere. Oh my god. No, it wasn't like that. It was a little bit. But I felt like, I mean, we had just had some monstrous anal, like, you know, hey, I feel like it's 
rules of war. I don't know, but it was the only happened one time. Never happened again. I hope I don't never see the likes of anything like that happening again. Like I was totally embarrassed when things go wrong. I'll be so embarrassed. embarrassed. Did that affect y'all connecting again? Oh no, I still put that thing down the next time. No, 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 no. And it's funny though when you say that. I think will men will put up with a lot of obscure things in the bedroom and still go fuck again. You know what I mean? For a woman, if a nigga accidentally let some shit out on me in the bed, oh no, nah, I don't want to see you. I don't want to talk to you. That's the end right there. It was nice to know you. But in reverse, I think men will go for a lot of obscure things happening in the bedroom. Right. And women will be like, no. I completely agree with that. Yeah. yeah. But why, but why is that? Why is it that men are more willing to put up with those kinds of things and still go fuck? I mean, I mean, I think guys are just 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 like you know it's like not a deal breaker you know like it's like okay you know i i, I know i don't like that don't do that no more but we'll we'll figure it out now if we'll you kill you me twice it's my fault <laughs> amen if you do me twice i should have i should have told you no thanks but i didn't so you will not do kill me three times i promise you <laughs> I draw the line. Two three, three, three times. It. <laughs> Gotta go. It's my fault. Go. Every third time. <laughs> G to G, G said, G. "Let it out. <laughs> <laughs> Let it out." So I wanted to kind of get into. I was having a conversation with somebody this week, you guys, and we were talking about where we really learned how to perform in bed. You know, when when our parents give us these sex talks and me including myself as a parent i don't necessarily go into how you actually perform but where do you feel like your biggest influence was in that phase of your life like where do you feel like you really learned how to fuck from hmm. probably porn to be honest i mean my my stepdad had an extensive porn collection and you i think porn ain't like it was first of all like, I think it shaped how I feel about black women because he only had black porn. Like, my, my boy's father had all kind of porn. He had white porn. I was like, nobody want to see this shit. But, and then my, my dad had, like, this black porn, and I was very careful because you wanted to put his tape back where you got it. You didn't want to deviate from his area, wherever he yes. left. So remember, yes. like, he was, what time stamp he was, and you would watch your little, your little scene and go back and and I, I remember like I remember the actors, you know. I remember the people. I was like, you know, you start knowing people, you know. It was this comedian uh that was on there that he was he was in the porn industry and he was one of them dudes on there. I was like, oh that's old boy, you know. I used to start recognizing people. So um uh and that's 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 a great question, man, because I mean you're not gonna get your kids specific like you when you right. get there, you might want to close your eyes, but you don't know about who told us that. Nobody right. Yeah, like, right. By and large, when it comes to sex, we just really kind of figured that on our own. Made mistakes, uh, you know, decided what you didn't like, you know. And, you know, I think probably why I don't want nobody to mess with my butt because the first girl tried to stick a finger in my booty. I was like, uh 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 <laughs> <laughs> What you doing? What you doing? You <laughs> what you doing? Don't, don't do that. And Gina G said, we learn from our partners, which is very true. So, Prophet, I know every everybody on here has kids. Do you think that as a parent, we should give a level of direction in that stance as parents? Do you think that when we're having these sex conversations and we're telling our kids about safety and, and protection and love and lust and all these other things, do you think we should also talk about how to perform or how to be pleasing to a person. Yeah, I I think in a way they would have to be a little receptive of it. You know, kids kind of don't like to hear their parents talk to them about certain things. Um, mm -hmm. But in a way, under, letting them know that the act and everything else in itself is not just about you. It's about the other person you with. Explore, get to know the person. And I think learning about sex was me having 
a partner for a long time. So I learned how to do a lot of things with that individual. So I didn't have to sit there and like jump around and be figuring a thousand people out because everybody's different. So, so you had, you had at a young age, you had, you, you were monogamous. You had, you had someone to figure it out with. Yeah. I, I got married when I was a baby. I was 22 years old when I got married. So, you know, there was a long span that I was with that individual in the beginning when I first started off, you know, I was doing whatever, but I learned the most in that monogamous relationship. Right, right, right. Because I was able to be me. And when I was younger, I was only, it, I had the three, three time rule. First time it was, we was just doing it to do it. Second time I was going to try and snatch your soul. Third time. Show up. Show up. Show up. And then after that third, Third one, that was it. After that, I ain't call you no more. That's what it was. Three times you're out. Listen, they say you don't build an emotional connection until the fourth time. So, bro, you had the game sold up early. Early, early. Early, early. Hey, hey I tell you what, you got to watch out for this young man with them thick ass fingers. You know, he was. You was a motherfucking tadpole. That was them motherfucking mittens. You got no more. <laughs> that's why a lot of young dudes like older women, no doubt. You guys, I was just telling somebody the other day. That's how I know I'm getting older because young dudes are starting to look good. Like, oh, that's this this forty is creeping up on me real fast. And but, not only they look good, you look good to them. Mm -hmm. I ain't got the time. We can't have a conversation. I ain't got the time. I ain't they got the time. What you talking about? Yeah, you won't be talking about that anyway. Cause, Cause, I like to talk after, like you know, I'm one of them chicks. I want to have a conversation with you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk to no young nigga after sex. I can't do it. I don't even know what that conversation is like. So, how are things at your mama's house? No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> she over there. She over there smashing some nigga that look like me. You know what I mean? With little Ray Ray and them doing no thanks. That's right. You mean old nigga? But so I too did learn through porn. And I don't necessarily feel like that. That was probably maybe the the best way. Like I wish I maybe have had an older sister or um, an aunt that was comfortable or somebody to say, "Oh, niggas do sleep after sex, Gina. They do, but some of them stay up and talk all night. I like that shit. But I think that um, it would have been nice to have had somebody to say to me, "Hey." Maybe this is how you should do things. Maybe this is how you should try things. So then maybe I would not have been scared of some of those situations. So um, I was one of them too, sneaking and watching porn and got caught. And you know what I mean? And then that part's embarrassing. But then to try, then you want to try to remember what you saw and how to do it when you get there. And it doesn't always work what out. What were you watching? Candy Christian. Which is still to this day my favorite porn movie. If anybody ever finds it, send it to me. VHS. I don't care how you send it to me. <laughs> Called Candy Christian. It has to be made in the seventies. But it was like a full length movie, two hours, script, dope, acting, horrible, sex, phenomenal. I mean, these white people. It was white folks. It was oh, all kinds not, of crazy. I, I ain't never seen that. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was all kinds of craziness going on in this movie, you guys. But it really and it showed me so much in such a short span of time because you had male, female, woman on woman. You had dudes. You had orgies. You had um, so the, the actress name was Candy Stanton. Did, hey, <laughs> hey, that movie was great. It was great, you guys. But I do, like I said, I, I wish that there was always somebody to maybe give me that kind of advice. Like now as an adult, we have these kinds of conversations and you may say, oh, well, I put it on her like such and such. And I did that. And, you know, as adults, we might share technique and, and things of that nature. But I feel like when you're when you're in that phase, it is nice to at least have a little bit of a little bit of guidance. I can't say that I'm going to tell my daughters full on. Hey, this how you suck a dick. I'm not having that conversation with my kid. But I do think that it's important for them to understand pleasing themselves is important so that they can, you know, understand how to please somebody else or at least teach somebody. <laughs> First off, Gina G, that movie is worth looking up, bitch. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Change my life. <laughs> not, 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 but you, you bring up an interesting point, uh, T. Gray, because it's like, 
does it matter that the porn you started looking at was not African American? Hmm. It's gonna so, affect the way you deal with people. So I will tell you that I've seen so much more in white porn than what I've seen in black porn. Period. Like I said, even even in that one movie, there was so many different dynamics of sex. I was thirteen watching this shit. Blew my mind. Okay, it's probably the reason why I'm T gray today. Who the hell knows? Probably why I'm still talking about this shit. Mm-hmm. But it definitely um, shaped my 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 vision of how open to be to things. Um, it I didn't have I wasn't necessarily scared to to try the different shit that I saw that they were already doing. Like I thought what they were doing was normal. So say if I watching black porn, to me black porn is kind of chill. It's Maybe eight different positions, the same nigga, same dick, same like it's it's all the same. Like you don't really see as much umph put into it as some of these, some of the production value that you see in white porn. Just you know what I mean. You might not see the orgies and the it was incest. It was it was all kinds of shit. Like, but it just it did kind of give me a clear picture of being open, um, probably from that. And then I'm into Asian right. porn as an adult. Excuse me. <coughs> like black porn is like my least favorite. Really? Yeah. It's my Asian least favorite. Porn, Asian porn is whack to me because they always blur out the genitalia. So I'm not into those, but what I am into is the aggressive shit. I'm into the aggressive shit. I'm into the, the hidden camera shit. Like I'm into weird stuff. Don't mind me. I'm into hidden weird camera. stuff. What's hidden camera? <laughs> I, 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 I don't know nothing about that. Wait a minute. I'm weird. I'm weird. So Granville said the sex is the same. So I mean, I get what you're saying, Granville, about the sex being the same, but and the sex to me is only the same because just there's penetration. But when you look at at porn and really what gets you off. I like the sounds that the Asian women make. Like if I ever get me an Asian girlfriend, y'all hold motherfucking hold on, because that bitch is gonna be making some noises for me. But I just um the hidden camera thing is they might be on a bus in a very public place, they could be on a train, and motherfuckers just start fucking with them. It's I just don't know. It's like it's it's low-key my fantasies, but I know that it would never really happen in reality. Really. I probably just told y'all too much. We're going to talk about something else. <laughs> We're we going to move on because if I start diving into my porn, it's like a rabbit hole. You you don't want to go down there. You don't want to go down there. Asshole. You don't want to go down there. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that what's really wrong with C. Greg? I am nasty, bitch. I am. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I know like that you, you start room. running when you start talking about this. <laughs> I just came back from Atlanta. I feel like every time I go, I get the cooties. Every time I go, I get the cooties. Um, so it's kind of keeping to what we were talking about is what we learned younger. As an adult now, what would you tell your virgin self? What advice would you give your virgin self about sex? Is that for me? Sure. <laughs> yes. What would I tell my younger self? Um, I don't know. I, you know, satisfy her first. You know, work, work. You know, and and I've kind of always came from that perspective, but I, I would definitely focus on that even more. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's important. That's important. Do you think that your virgin self would have listened? If if I knew it was me telling them, yeah, he'd be like, oh yeah, oh, I'm listening to you. You you probably know something. <laughs> what about you, Pro? What would you tell your virgin self? Uh probably would have omitted the, the three time rule. Probably would have omitted that. That okay. Would you have omitted it because there was somebody that was worth it or omitted it because you've learned that it's deeper than that? Uh, Learned that that, you know, sexual interaction is a lot deeper than just, you know, 
just having sex. Like there is a connection. There's a lot of things that you don't know when you're younger, when you do get older, you realize it. So probably would have had some, some pretty dope connections. Yeah. If I could go back to my virgin self, I would have told her, um, it gets better. I would have told her that it gets better. Um, Hey, it gets better. It gets better than that, than that one day, than that one time. And for me. So are you surprised that your first time wasn't great? My first time, I think, was fantastic. Really? And, and, I think and, it was, and it's gotten better than that. Right. I oh, think wow. my first time was good only because I'm not one of those persons that walks around with, with a bad story about it. Um, the person was kind. He was gentle. He took his time. There wasn't, you know, really any pressure. Um, he was still nice to me after simple shit. You know what I'm saying? Like it was, it and was. I, no, no, it makes a difference. Right. And I was very, very young. Were you in young. love with him after? No, I wasn't in love with him. No, but and in, in, in at the age that I was, I wouldn't even have understood what love was at that age or being in love. Like I was way too young to be having sex, but I was the only girl with all the guys talking plenty shit. I had older cousins, older brothers. Like, look, looking back, all the time. looking mm-hmm. back, was was that like inappropriate? Like, should he have not been messed with you? Was he was he way older, or was y'all both just too young? He probably shouldn't have been messing with me. He wasn't an adult. He was also a teen. He was a teenager. But yeah, we both probably ain't really had no business. Me wow. more so than him. Me way more so than him. Yeah. How how are you more than him when you were younger? Um, because he was probably at an age where that's where you start doing it. You know what I mean? He was right. 16. So he was at an age where that's that's when you, you know, you you, you just getting your fingers wet and shit. And, you know, right. you you still doing stuff. Was you double digits? Yes, bitch, but barely. Yes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> bitch, but barely. And so I in and, and that, too, plays another piece with the watching porn so much as a kid. I thought I was ready for things. And he told you to all of that. Right. I thought I was ready for shit that I just really wasn't ready for. And I talk shit. If anybody knows me well, you all know I talk plenty of shit all the time. That's that's just T. Gray. But imagine me talking this much shit at 10, 11 and 12 years old. Like I was a shit talker. And it came from, like I said, always being around the guys. So I acted like the guys. I talked like the guys. Um, and when it, and even when it came to that, now that age, teenage boys, they lying about everything they doing. I'm thinking these niggas telling the truth. I'm watching these porns. I'm thinking this is what's really happening out here in this world. And I got to fall in line because the girls that they're talking about, I ain't doing none of this shit. So, you know, it was like, you know, um, at some point I'm going to, and I need to know how to. Do, do, do you ever get to reconnect with that person like at an older age and, and, and y'all have a real yeah. encounter? So he got shot. Um, he got shot some years yeah. later. Yeah. Yeah, he got shot some years later. But but when we saw each other, because we didn't live far from each other, when we saw each other in passing, he was a friend of my cousin. Like he was always nice. He was always sweet. He was always kind. Um, and so when he did get shot, like I was legitimately sad. Like I felt bad. Like he was never a bad dude, and never as far as to me, he was never. You know how some young guys can be. Right. He was. He just wasn't that. He was a sweetheart. But um, and even when I saw him, a good purse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't regret it. Um, but it definitely set the stage and set the tone, probably for what everybody gets today. You know what I mean? Because my experiences happened so much earlier, and then there was no guideline. There was whatever I had to learn on my own, and just let the chips fall where they may. Now, here I am. 30 some years later. Okay, well, the chips fell well because I have these shows and these platforms and I'm able to talk about these things and I've and I've made a point to have a better understanding of them. But at that time, you know, I wish that things were different. I wish that I had taken my time. Somebody taught me, you know, how to navigate this stuff. Yeah. 
So uh, do you are you able to see like we talk about our children? Are you able to see your kid, your kids, it, you and your children? You're like, oh my Thank baby girl. God, man. no. Let me, let me <laughs> <try to eat. laughs> Thank God, no. So I have three daughters. So and you have a lot of daughters. So I understand you don't from I don't never want to see me in them for real. I don't. Right. Not not that person. But, so, but, but but it will be it will be honest to see. It, it will be it will be, yeah. and so I I over educate. I probably tell my kids way too much, um, wow. but I believe in being a transparent transparent parent. So I talk to them a lot. Um, I educate. I answer whatever question they have. Even their friends ask me a ton of questions. I answer whatever question they have and I answer it honestly. I don't come across as if I'm a saint. I don't try to pretend like a lot of other parents do. Like, yo, daddy is the only man I've ever been with. Nah, I was out in these streets when I was young, but I'm, you know what I mean? Like, I, I tell the truth. So my daughters have always had an open door to be able to come and tell me, talk to me and, and communicate with me. So my oldest is 19. My middle daughter is 17. My oldest um, had her first experience at 18. You know what I mean? I call that a win. Yo, you can, I know you that might sound crazy. Yeah. I, I call that a win because yeah, I have to almost. Yeah. In, in comparison to, to my life and, and what I was doing. Yeah. I call that a win. And yeah, and she was comfortable enough to come and talk to me about it. You know what I mean? And to even let me know, mom, this is what I'm thinking about, or this is what I might feel oh, like I'm ready for. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow, good for you. Good for you. Yeah. And, and and let's look at the other side. Like my son, like, you know, he got a girl, he got a baby now. And I told him, I said, dude, I said, you know, I know you want to be a, a good dad and be there for your child and this woman. But nigga, your ass is way too charming to be uh, be with one, one woman right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking at him. I see this motherfucker swag and his and and his you know his energy, and I'm like, nigga, you gonna you gonna you gonna fuck this girl up? <laughs> and she don't have a chance because I'm looking at him, and he's he's ten times more charming than I am. <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! Like, this dude is incredible. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, good luck, man. <laughs> you know. That's crazy. That's crazy. You are one of the most charming dudes I know, though. I can't even take that away from you. I can't even take that away from you. Cool as shit. That kind of cool, you don't just come across every day. <laughs> so to put all that cool into a whole nother youngin, uh, to take you, you, know, you, when you, you when you ain't cute, you got to do other things. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. It's a whole lot of not cute people out here killing the game. Indeed. 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 Killing Indeed. the game. Killing the game. So when we're going through this process of teaching our kids and, and, and what you're saying to your son about how charming he is, um, he's not out of, I guess, what we might look at as, as, as the whole phase or as the exploration phase. Do you think that phase is absolutely necessary? Like, does everybody need to go through that phase? Well, I think I think definitely men do. You know, I, I can't I can't speak to women, but you know, I think women tend to mature a little quicker. So uh, a twenty some year old woman is is legitimately a lot of times ready to settle that settle down. And mm -hmm. a man, I believe, needs to be like twenty twenty seven plus thirty. You know, on route to financial security and understanding where he is physically and mentally you know i think i think to marry a, a man sub 27 is a, a person cruising for a bruising mm. so what do you think about that prophet especially since you you were married at 22 were you were you out of your whole phase when you got married yeah like by the, before i got out of high school I, I was looking to settle down and and get married like that was that was my thing. So all the stuff I did was like junior high school, high school. So I got that out the way early. And then, you know, I wanted to start my family and have now, that. Now, are, you, are you a product of a two parent household? Yes. I, I, I think that affects you too. Like if you're even willing to think about it, if you saw that, then you, you probably, that picture made you more susceptible to it. 
Yeah. And, you know, I was ready for it. I, I was so the, the whole phase was was gone early and I started early. So, you know, six, seven years in now I'm ready to get married after doing my my stuff that I was doing. Now, I feel like that is a phase that. And I hear you say six, seven years in. So that means all the middle school, all the high school, you was just getting it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what is it that you really learn as a child about sex? You know what I mean? You're still a child. I feel like that phase should happen in adulthood. I think that there's so many things that we come across once we reach adulthood that we would never, especially on an emotional level, that we would never even have considered as far as sex is concerned. You know what I mean? As a kid, as a teenager out there just doing your thing. It's so many I things. Mean, I, that think you man under the bus. Yeah, I think you threw him under the bus. He's like, hey, so did you feel like you you fucked up at twenty two? Like, oh, uh, did they? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had already done that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. Hey, hey, Papa, so cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that shit when I was three years old. So yeah, so yeah. You know, that was, that was, you know. I, when I came out of the vagina, I took some of it with me, so I knew that I I knew I didn't want to go back. Yeah, married. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for asking, OT Gray. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Probably was cool as hell when he was like, "Hey, you know what I'm saying? You asked me that. Uh, I think I was uh, I think I was two years old. I was just." Uh, just out of diapers, and I said, you know, it's time to get the pussy. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> I knew how to set the time on that VCR to make sure I put everything back where it needed to go. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, boy. I'm sorry, Prophet. You know I love you, though. What, what yeah, 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 yeah. No, oh. it's so good. <laughs> you do that, too. Hey, hey, you, know, you know how your boys do that? Like, like you marry. And your boys be like, hey, 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 you know, you just out, we all kicking it. They like, hey, hey, ladies, y'all don't want to mess with them. This nigga married. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, T Gray. I'm sorry. Sorry, <laughs> forgive me. So, one thing that uh, I love about my friend is you are constantly bringing new things to the table, new content. You have a fantastic new show, which I got to be a part of, which was super, super fun. So tell everybody really quickly about your Rodney Perry Live, your improv live. Well, well, I, I knew I wanted to do something on social media. I'm building my Facebook and my YouTube following, right? And so uh, I'm, I found myself in a mode of constantly creating content. I'm like, okay, what can I do easily that's in my wheelhouse of things to do that I could I could produce like in this type of setting, right? And improv was just one of those things. I'm already teaching improv workshop. I got a thousand games to play and I know how to run a show. And so I, I, I decided to, to do the improv five, you know, which which is, is a cool show. Uh I'm also developing a you know Rodney Perry Live, which is a more of a talk format, a more of a uh there's people with, you know, two or three subjects talking for hours. That's another thing. Uh, at the end of the day, I need hours. Mm -hmm. I need I need hours online. You know, I got to monetize my YouTube, monetize my Facebook. And this is the reality. And probably I'm sure you know this. It's a lot of money out there. Yes. I mean, on social media, Facebook, YouTube, uh, 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 what's uh, the, the gaming platform? Um, Twitch. Twitch, uh, all these people like thousands and thousands of dollars, and these internet comedians be eating off of it. And guess what? Rodney Perry about to come and sit at the table. Yes. Caffeine, you can make some money on caffeine too heavy. I don't yeah. even know about that. Yeah, that's the battle Caffe rapping, right? Caffeine, yo, know, they they sit there as digital money. They throw coins, everything at you, tips, everything. I don't even know nothing about caffeine. I gotta look that up. 
Now Rodney about to be a rapper. So I thought <laughs> in the vein of your new show, I thought that it would be good to maybe try a little improv today, maybe a little sexual improv. I thought it'd be funny. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's why I want to make sure. Profit. Yes. <laughs> so you, are, are you gay to, 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 to do a little improv? Sure. I'm, sure. I'm okay, so. Get up them, them, them goddamn thick ass fingers. <laughs> Stop making me laugh. So, this is the game. I'm okay. for two of them and it's over. Nigga, you probably be pregnant. <laughs> Fuck that. I ain't, I ain't doing that. <laughs> be pregnant. Be a mess in here. Um, this is the game. Since everybody in here is, in, is into porn. Oh God. Rodney, you're going to be the porn director. Okay, right. profit. <laughs> You're the talent, but you ain't taking the direction. Okay. You bought the worst porn star in the world. And Rodney, you the director. You got to get him right. Is this gay porn? Is you in it? No. He got a woman. No. I'm not in it. I'm the, I'm the host. I don't, like this I don't like this shit at all. <laughs> you know, like, we can all do it. I could be in it, too. We can make we can make it. You better get in it. <laughs> we can make it a group thing, no pun intended. All right. I'll be your I'll I'll, I'll be your co-star. Hold on. Yes, yes, get your hat. Crazy, 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 crazy. Well, hey, wonderful time. Oh, Having yeah, a good yeah. time. No doubt. That's what it's all about, though, you guys. I hope everybody's enjoying. People are in here chiming in. Y'all stay finding out. Oh, hell, he got that half for real. <laughs> oh, shit. You <laughs> you your Wesley Snipes shit. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. So Rodney's the director. All right. I'm well, the well, star. You the, the, the horrible, horrible talent. Ah, uh, yes. First of all, T. Gray, thank you so much for blessing our set today. Your skills go uh, uh, far and wide. Um, did you get all of the Perrier water in your trailer? Yes, yes, I have all the water. Thank you so much. I have all of it. I have a brand new talent for you today. This man goes without saying. He is the foremost. He's, he's from Bangladesh. And they say his penis is golden. Oh, oh, I haven't had a gold penis yet. GP, are you with me? Yes, I am here. I don't GP. know what my angle does sound like, so this is all we got. That's all I got for you. Good enough, GP. <laughs> GP is short for golden penis. GP. GP, here. Fingers on deck. Ah, yes, yes, yes. That is also a hidden skill that he has as well. So um, uh, if you would, GP... Uh, would you um let's go missionary? Then we're gonna double back to uh anal, and then once you finish off and rip a dipple down real hard and action. Okay, but where do you want me to put the gold penis in the long hole or the round hole first? You want to put it right here. You can't see it. It's wide open. It's wide open. You can't see it. They both wide open. Are you kidding me, GP? Stay focused. <laughs> you focus your brain now. Let's start over. You missionary. I can work like this. Know, then you rip a nipple. Rip, I rip a nipple. Like this. And, and action. Oh, I feel good. Turn around, please. No, no, stop, stop. Somebody bring me a Perrier. I need cut, to pour it cut, on my vagina. Cut, I need cut, to pour it on cut. my vagina. Cut! You just made my vagina go on fire. I need to some water you, down there. Shut your mouth, woman. GP! Yes. I told you! Buss it! Buss it! Buss it! Buss it! I did. It's That's why it's on fire. It's on fire now because I did. Okay. You did not do a good job. Have you had sex before, sir? Yes, many times. Just not no, with you. Not with T. Gray. No. Ah, yes. Okay, T. Gray. We have some issues. If you would, you take the lead. And, and let's see. And action! Okay, now I'm going to put this platinum pussy on you. 
You like it? You like it? <laughs> what? Platinum and gold don't go together. Oh, she's going to corrode my penis. <laughs> you know what? Move over. Move over, gold. Okay. I will take it. <laughs> yes. Can we please get a professional in here? Yes. We need a professional. Lucky. Mr. Rodney, Lucky are you. you going to do it for me, please, Mr. Rodney? All right. Watch me work. <laughs> yeah, I look crazy. Gonna open up. Missionary. Then anal, and then I rip a, rip the nipples. Here, you grab you grab a nipple. Here, take it, take it, fingers. Yes. Now rip it down. Yes. yes! Fantastic. Yes! Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Y'all are crazy. <laughs> Gina, my I love start a campaign. Put it start Gina G as, as the foot doctor. <laughs> she crazy. She's crazy. Thank you so much. <laughs> Why was I yelling though? Because you had your megaphone. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing big things. So you have a great movie coming yeah, out. I ain't never wore it like this. Hey, and it, it's dope. It's dope, bro. It really go like this. It's dope. So you have a great movie coming out, coming to America too. I know so many people are looking forward to it. Tell us a little bit about your experience being on that set and just being a part of something that. I guess for a lot of us, Phil, it's, it's historic. It's such a classic. Oh, it's absolutely historic, man. I mean, you know, I I started doing comedy many years ago, and I remember just just wanting to be trying to figure out what type of comic I wanted to be. And I saw this guy on Saturday Night Live, and his name was Eddie Murphy. And I saw that guy, and I was like, "That's it. That's that's what I want to be." And to 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 many years later to walk on a set. And Eddie Murphy tell me good morning. That was like crazy to me. And so um, I'm excited for y'all to see it. I think the story is going to um, hold up. I think they haven't disappointed in terms of capturing the mystique of the, the previous films. And, uh, you know, I just hope they don't cut me out. You know, <laughs> no, 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 no. I've been cut out of movies. Mm -hmm. You be walking around talking too much, your ass be on the floor. You be like, "Damn it, damn mm -hmm. it!" <laughs> so at the very least, even if they cut my lines out, they can't cut me out because I'm in like six scenes. But, okay, you know, I'm in, I'm in there, I'm in the back, I'm, I'm doing my thing. But I just they need to keep my lines, and I'm waiting for myself to end up in the trailer because they put the trailer out, but I was like in the background of the trailer. But, I uh, saw it. <laughs> Excuse me. I saw you and Nav Green. <laughs> yeah, me and Nav together. Every, they can't cut. If they cut me out, they cut him out. Oh no. So oh, we did. No. But me, Luna, me, Nav, Lunell, um, Tracy Morgan, um, uh, Jermaine Fowler, and Leslie Jones. We are part of. We're we're all together most of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it, it's it's gonna be a, a real a real good look. And hopefully it adds to the to the energy I'm creating on social media and, and other places. So do you feel like um, you, what did you learn? Do you feel like you learned anything being a part of that? This, this, is, this is what I learned. You know, we talk about kings of comedy and people like Sid and Steve and no disrespect to them. But that nigga Eddie Murphy is a real king, like. He had a certain regalness about himself. Like it was like he was above the bullshit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was it was a moment on set where people was joking about something, and I remember him being he been there like <laughs> he, he really he really was laughing. <laughs> Silly Negroes. <laughs> it was 
He was so above the trivial BS. And mm -hmm. I just remember thinking to myself, this nigga is better than us. You know? And um, I don't know if it's being rich for so many years or or what it was, but he had a circle. And, but he had a king too, so that played to it. And so, uh, and he's still a funny, funny guy. So uh, I, it was just impressive to be, it was like, you know, like even now, when I get a chance to go watch a, one of one of the vets, whether it's DL or or any of the, any of the greats, uh, even Monique, who was my friend, I sit down and watch because it's like a college course, and mm -hmm. so I, I actually uh, learned a lot watching that young man, man. And it was a pleasure. Him, Arsenio, uh, John Amos is on the set. Uh, Sherry Headley is on the set. Uh, it was so many great actors and actresses and funny people that it was like being in a master class. So once it's all said and done for you, like what what do you want your imprint to be, or how how big do you want to be? You know what, I want this. You know when it's all said and done and people start talking about the greatest, I just want to be in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, people talk about LeBron as LeBron the goat. Forget the goat. He's in the fucking conversation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know, Kobe Bryant is in the conversation. You know. Rodney Perry, at the end of the day, I want people to go, man, that nigga, did, did, did y'all say Rodney Perry, though? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, nigga. Oh, you right, Rodney Perry. That nigga. You know, so I want, I want that. I want that to be the truth. And, you know, and so that's what we're building. We're building a brand to put us in the conversation of the greatest. Hmm. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And I am, I'm a fan. Um, I'm your friend first. But I, but as a fan, I could say I really, I appreciate what you put into it. Um, sometimes I feel like people don't really put their all or, or the expectation is because they've gotten to a certain level. Things are just supposed to automatically come. And I feel like just as this game goes, you're not one of those people. It's not like you expected to be there. It's like you're going to go out, you're going to go get it. And keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming. And then you pour so much into other people. I think that's a fantastic thing. So, you know, I, I appreciate you, though. Seriously. I do. I do. You all I, right. Hey, some comedians be full of shit. I'm just going to go ahead and get that out. Get that off my chest. A lot of them. Yeah. You say, let me FaceTime. Where you going? Nowhere yet. Come, come right here. Let these people see what you got. Give on. me a second. I have to piss on mommy because she was like, she wanted to hear what you had to say about it. Oh, goodness gracious. What she got on? She, she got on some type of, I don't know, some type of some rainbow outfit. Uh uh, uh uh. Uh uh. Hell no. Okay. But well, how old are you? That's the question. February the 5th. Okay. It's cute. What kind of shoes you got on? Look, we're going to solve no conversation. It's cute. I just came to show them the dress. I don't know. Where you get that from? I got it from a store in the mall. Uh, so what's the name of the store? Uh, Smashme.net? Oh, well, well, where are you going in it? That's the question. Where are you going? I don't know. You How much is it? It was like $20. $20 dresses don't belong on my child. Listen. He's on, he's on I'm on a show. He's on a show. <laughs> See? You got a teacher. You got a teacher. The $20 dress. Uh, it's a cute, it's a <laughs> as long as you can wear these outfits well. Cause you ain't gonna be in the way I'm long. Listen, it's a whole lot of women. <laughs> Wait, little girl. Wait. <laughs> Your daughter is such a nice shape. Somewhere there's a 40 year old bro <coughs> wearing that same jump. Matter of fact, get your mama one. Get your mama outfit too. Mommy said she don't know who's that. <coughs> she said no. She's not wearing. Hey, hey, give me. Uh, uh, what y'all say? Can she wear it or not? Oh yeah, most definitely. Oh, the hell now. <laughs> Get your mama one She look cute. She look cute. When mama come in there now, when mama come in with the dress now, mama got to put on the stilettos and all of that. She got, she hey, got, hey, she got to amp it up. Two out nights tops with that outfit for $20. Listen, $20. That's it. When that, when that, when that club sweat hit it, it's almost off. <laughs> Becomes flammable after that. <laughs> Gotta you know, go. Gotta you know, as, as a father, though, I, you know, I used to push back on all that stuff. You know, 
all you all you can hope is you you equip your kids with the tools to make good decisions. Mm-hmm. And other than that, I mean, you can't you can't let me tell you the power of sex. I mean, that's why it's great to have these conversations because sex is undefeated. People are gonna do it. Mm-hmm. Like you try to stop somebody from doing it, you are gonna get your feelings hurt. Yeah, they gonna they gonna do it. They gonna find somebody to to, to take them down. Mm-hmm. You your ba- your baby girl going down. That's what I say all the time. That's what you that's what you want to leave here with. <laughs> if you try to do this, you get a child, male or female, your baby going down. It's going down. Somebody yeah. gonna somebody gonna break off like an improper fraction. And you know what? My only hope is that the name T. Gray rings in the niggas' ears for generations to come. I hope that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that when they get her, he be like, "Oh yeah, I knew, I know your mom is. You know that." Yeah, how do you think you got here? <laughs> hey. hey, want them to know what the expectation is? Okay, that's T. Gray's daughter. Goddamn right. Like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> just, just joking. She was I a great guess- woman, but she finished strong. That's <laughs> <laughs> all you can hope for. That's all you can hope for. I get so scared for that oldest one because she's a Scorpio, and I'm like, do you know it, it's it's so much with the stigma with with the Scorpios. My grandmother was one, my mother was one, and my oldest daughter is. I'm like, listen, somebody help somebody, somebody. <laughs> It's all right. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid of that point. You know what I mean? When even my baby is seven, I'm not afraid when that comes later in life because I know that I've equipped them with the proper knowledge to handle themselves in those situations. So I'm not concerned. I'm more concerned about these little niggas that's going to be nose wide open because they put it on. I feel bad for them. (laughs) I do. I do. But this has been good. This has been good. I appreciate you being on the show. Um, I want you to tell everybody how they can follow you and find you and just get caught up on all things Rodney Perry. Easy to find the website is rodneyperry.com. All the social media is Rodney Perry Live, which you can see, I think, right there. Uh, back up, boom, right there. Uh, I got I got a little fat finger too there. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> it's, Amen. Uh, it's um, yeah, Rodney Perry live on all social media, and I'm building a YouTube page. So if, if you haven't had a chance, go follow my YouTube page right now. And uh, thank you, T. Gray, for having me, man. It's Prophet. God bless you, man. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too, brother. Yeah. So everybody, if you haven't, I don't, I don't know who wouldn't know Rodney Perry or who might be hiding, you know, under a rock somewhere, but. He's a comedian. He's an actor. He's a writer. He's a teacher. He's just about jack of all trades and definitely on his way to mastering them all to be one of the strongest names that's going to leave an imprint on us in comedy. Um, So I thank you so much for being on the show. You guys are so much more coming up next month is going to be phenomenal. Hold on. Buckle your seatbelts. Shit's going to get crazy. Whatever it is that you want to talk about, I'm taking it. Send it to my DM. Send it to me on Facebook. Send it to me on Instagram at the T Gray. If it's questions that you want answered, if it's sex advice that you want, send it to me. We're going to chop it up. Whoever the guest is, we're going to chop it up. We're going to fix your life in here. Okay. We're going to bring Prophet back because he's always fun. Prophet, is there anything you want to tell them going on coming up with WEMS Radio? We doing our thing. We got the, the the new studio opening up in Baltimore in the next couple of months, and then Yay! and we got another once you know stuff lift up in Atlanta. There's going to be the other station in Atlanta opening up shortly after that. So we we definitely doing some things. Yes, Gina G said, "Thick finger boys." Hell yeah! And I'm. I'm going to go ahead and say men with big hands. It's a story about that, you guys. Y'all got to watch my show. Go <laughs> run those back. Covers <laughs> 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 with big hands. Be out here doing some stuff. Everything thick on them, y'all. I'm just saying. Everything thick. 
But thank you all for chiming in. I will see you again next Tuesday right here on WEMS Radio, 9 to 10 p.m. I love you guys. We're going to have fun this year. That's it, y'all. And we out. We out, y'all. <laughs>